Hello and welcome to CET 4884 Security Methods and Practice. In this session, we are going to address implementing information security within the organization. The security deployment life cycle um, and the implementation uh, can be accomplished through changing the configuration and operation of organization's information systems. And that implementation or those changes could include the procedure within the company or the organization, and that's through changing the policy. It could include people, and that uh, could be through training. It could include hardware or software, and that's through uh, firewalls or encryption or other software hardware um, security measures. It inc uh, could include data um, classification and uh, data protection. The organization translates blueprint for information security into a concrete project plan. Whatever you need to accomplish, you need to translate that into a project plan that can be implemented or executed within a certain period and under certain budget. Once the organization's vision and objectives are understood, process for creating project plan can be defined. Uh, we can identify the major steps in executing project plan as the planning. Actually, before that, we have the initiation of the project itself, identifying the need, and then the planning for um, how to address that need uh, with the proper security measure, then uh, supervising or uh, monitoring the tasks and actions uh, that will be uh, processed or that, that will be executed and then closing or wrapping up with the project. Each organization must determine its own project management methodology to implement the uh, proper security measure uh, in their organization. The first thing in the uh, project plan is to identify the different activities or different tasks needed to accomplish the, or uh, to uh, implement uh, the security measure uh, in the system or in the organization. Identifying these activities or these tasks is called work breakdown structure or WBS. The major project tasks are work to be accomplished. That's what we need to identify in the work breakdown structure. The work or the tasks that need to be accomplished the assignees uh, and those are the resources needed to accomplish each task the start and end dates for each activity or for each task the amount of effort required to accomplish that task and the estimated capital and non-capital expenses the money needed to accomplish that and then the identification of dependencies between or among the tasks that means which one uh, will come first or uh, can I finish uh, um, uh, activity 3 without finishing 2. Can I start two activities at the same time, parallel, concurrent? Um, all that should be identified so I can start the work and uh, make sure that I, I will accomplish it properly. Each major uh, work breakdown structure task is uh, further divided into smaller tasks or specific action steps, subtasks. This is an example of um, a project plan or work breakdown structure where you can see the task, the resources needed, and the start end date, estimated effort in hours, the duration for each activity, the estimated capital expenses, the money needed to achieve that activity, the estimated non-capital expenses, whatever uh, comes as non-start. Uh, um, we have the uh, initial uh, uh, amount of money which is called capital and then the non-capital which is the uh, time or the money needed to accomplish that task uh, uh, individually which is uh, could be it could be in a sort of labor or material or other things and then we have the dependencies or in some other cases we call it predecessors as you can see here you cannot accomplish task 4 without finishing task 3 so you can see the here that I need three to be done to start um, uh, executing task four and so on. Uh, 
as the project plan is developed adding the details is not always straightforward there are lots of consideration or there are lots of things that need, uh, we need to consider uh, when uh, uh, developing the uh, detailed plan uh, the uh, considerations include financial priority time and schedule staff procurement organizational feasibility and training for the financial consideration you know no matter what information security needs exist the amount of effort that can be expended depends on the funds available uh, you cannot spend uh, or you cannot uh, implement security measures more than you can afford so you have to look at the budget and you have to uh, 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 implement what we call cost-benefit analysis uh, to verify uh, and prioritize the uh, different uh, projects that need to be implemented and different measures that need to be implemented within the organization uh, whether it's whether we are talking about public or private organization they have a budget constraints and uh, they have to follow that constraint or they need to justify the amount of budget that will be spent on security uh, project uh, and uh, uh, in some cases you have to pinch mark with other organizations to make sure that um, they understand the concept of or the importance of implementing such a security measure for the priority considerations we know that uh, when you analyze the organization and the need for uh, information security and controls uh, you might have a lot in the list to do uh, but um, you cannot implement all of them at the same time maybe due to again budget uh, constraints or other constraints for that you select uh, the high priority projects to be implemented first so you make sure that your uh, network or your information security or your information system is secured first in the organization then you start implementing other smaller projects within the organization the time and schedule uh, impacts dozens of points in the development of the project plan uh, for example the time to order or uh, receive install and configure security controls uh, you have to make sure that uh, your uh, controls are there uh, to be implemented when it's the time for that activity to begin so before that activity begins you already made the order and received the material so you start the installation immediately what if we don't have users that's trained to do that so we need to train the users before we start the implementation what if um, uh, we need to justify that then we need to um, explain that or have the time to explain it uh, for our management on the value and return on investment of using that control within the organization in the case that we are assigning people or resources to each activity I need to look at the staffing or uh, the people that we have in the organization do we have the qualified or trained personnel to uh, implement the project if we don't have the experienced personnel what can we do what should we do um, if uh, we don't have the people and we need to train them then we need to develop what's called training program and with that training program I need to implement certain policies and I need to train those uh, uh, staff members or employees on the new policies the uh, procurement considerations as we said before we need to understand when do we need to order the item and would it be shipped in time for the, the activity to start so there are many constraints that's involved in uh, getting the material getting the equipment that's needed to implement that project 
it can start from you know selecting the uh, material itself or the item to selecting the vendor or the supplier uh, or if we need to select a manufacturer for that item to uh, the distributor to the uh, proper shipping or shipment time and schedule uh, all these uh, constraints can affect the uh, execution of the project and uh, can delay if not implemented correctly the organizational feasibility consideration uh, when uh, we are implementing um, such a security measure then uh, we need to create policies and policies require time to develop so we need to consider that time within the project implementation and for that we need to train the employees on the new policies and the use of new technology and how new information security program affects their working lives daily lives so we need to train them we need to make sure that they understand the, the process they understand the new system and they un understand the new uh, policies the changes should be transparent to system users unless the new technology is intended to change procedures the training consideration it depends on the size of the organization and the uh, you know the number of people that will be in, uh, involved in the uh, implementation of the project or the security procedure uh, the uh, organization should uh, maybe conduct a phase in or pilot approach to implementation to make sure that they have the proper training for the uh, users um, in case that you have a larger organization it will be very hard to train the whole organization at one time based on that you can just take divisions and start the um, uh, training in those divisions and then move on to the next uh, division and so on one of the things that we need to consider once we um, finish with uh, the planning is the uh, understanding of project scope you know when you initiate and plan for an IT project you need to understand your boundaries the time that you need the effort the uh, budget that you have the quality of delivery that you need to uh, deliver at the end and you need to work within what you promised you need to deliver what you promised not more not less In the case of information security, project plans should not attempt to implement the entire security system at one time. You cannot change the whole system at one time. It will be very hard to implement such security measures and then fail in, you know, in the whole system. If you implement one security measure and there is a failure, then you can adjust the failure as needed. But if it was for the entire system it will be very hard to implement looking at the number of tasks that will be included or subtasks and the resources and the time schedule the limitation the considerations the boundaries uh, the constraints of uh, the project all these uh, you can uh, imagine or you can see the need for uh, project management and project management skills and the organization will select the uh, person with the most information security experience uh, to uh, lead the project and to make sure that it's implemented correctly as we said before all these activities should be monitored 
should be super, supervised and um, uh, measures of performance will be implemented to make sure that uh, the uh, new security measure being implemented correctly uh, the uh, security measures or the uh, uh, monitoring process will make sure that uh, the task being done with the required quality within time and within the budget the assigned budget in case of any problem it can be addressed immediately the security measures or the controls should be tested immediately to make sure that it's been implemented correctly in case again in case of any problem it will be easier to roll back on that task only and make sure that it's implemented right otherwise you have to restart the whole project and that's a disaster so usually you look at each task individually or even subtask and make sure that it's been implemented correctly and then move on to the next one and so on the negative feedback sometimes it it, it gives you um, a measure for the uh, results compared against the expected uh, when there is a deviation from what the plan was for then there should be a corrective action that should be taken or should be put in place project managers can adjust one of three parameters of uh, the implementation of the task they can adjust the effort and money allocated uh, they can play with the money from one activity to another just to make sure that we have the, uh, the budget so in case that we have extra money in one uh, activity I can move it to another activity that lacks the money or lacks the effort I can move people from one activity to another to make sure that the implementation uh, being done correctly so it depends on uh, again the project manager and their uh, uh, skills of balancing the money and the resources for the project they can move the stuff around also they can measure scheduling impact uh, they can change it uh, if they saw that uh, the schedule for a certain activity will impact the whole uh, project so they can assign uh, either overtime resources or uh, additional resources just to make sure that uh, that activity will be done uh, within time and will not impact the project implementation they can also control the quality or quantity of the del deliverables um, by their uh, uh, methodologies different methodologies and tools that they are using to monitor the execution of the uh, project they can control the quality and make sure that it's been delivered within the um, uh, required specifications this is an example of a negative feedback loop and how uh, it can benefit the uh, implementation of the project to make sure that it's been done correctly at the end we need to wrap up the project so to wrap up the project it's uh, it will be done through certain uh, procedural task uh, and it will be assigned to certain people um, uh, could be information security manager and then uh, documentation will be finalized uh, there will be a report uh, there will be uh, presentation uh, that can wrap up the meeting and uh, explain the implementation uh, of the new measures and what uh, changes has been done to the system the goal of that wrap up is to resolve any pending issues uh, any misunderstanding um, and you know at that point actually with the feedback the continuous feedback with the client and management and everybody uh, actually uh, you are sure that there are no major issues it could be some uh, minor issues that's bending and can be corrected uh, in few days after that 
or sometimes it will be 100% uh, uh, within specifications and can be delivered uh, immediately. That will be all for this session. If you have any questions, uh, you can uh, use the proper communication channel to communicate with me and um, uh, I will be more than glad to address it. Thank you and have a great day.